and welcome to this video. Not audio today, video. Um, and really a response to a few little questions people have left on YouTube. Um, people who want to know what things are that are in the background and uh, some of the things that I've got in the studio. And one guy asked, you know, why are the cameras so big and stuff like that. Well, I thought the easiest thing to do is probably explain what's going on. Um, the, the camera that you can see in the background here um, creeps into some of the shots, mainly because I'm very untidy and um, the studio has got so much junk in it that very often um, things just get in the way. But it's very difficult to hide a Vinton Dolphin jib arm. Now, Nowadays, if you look, you know, if you do a Google search and look at jib arms for cameras, they're all lightweight, super duper, easy to, easy to carry things. Um, they make big claims about how little they weigh, yet they're very sturdy. You know, you can sort of put them in a rucksack and take them with you. Well, you can't do that with this thing. Um, back years ago, this was Anglia Televisions and uh, they got rid of a load of gear and uh, I picked it up. Didn't pay, even pay very much money for it, to be honest. Um, but it's an amazing piece of kit. It's made by Vinton, British manufacturer, uh, and they're really proper engineers. So everything they make, and they're still making gear today, of course, uh, everything they make is like over-engineered, very heavy, <laughs> very chunky, and they last forever. And this jib arm is no exception. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is the beastie. Um, essentially, it's a pile of weights on one end and it's a quite heavy camera on the other and it's sitting on the head. Now, one of the questions I got was, why is the pan handle the wrong way round? It's quite right. I've got it attached to the front, mainly because it means I can move it without having to get up. Having a, the pan handle on the back of a camera where you would normally have it, great if the cameraman is standing behind but I'm not when I'm here on my own so this beastie here is much easier for me to do because I can just grab hold of it now the beauty of this thing here is it doesn't have any brakes on at the moment which means if I put my one finger in here little finger even the, my little finger can move this up and down with no effort whatsoever um, it's just beautifully made the idea being that you've got a pile of weights on one end, um, you've got a camera on the other end, and there's a little adjustable counterbalance, um, and the counterbalance will let you keep it in perfect weight. Um, it's got some lead weights on the back, and they even come in a little flight case, which is really nice. Um, so I use it on here. Now, the camera that's on the end of this thing, um, this is a JVC, it's a 750. I've got three of those and they're like most things I buy not the conventional thing to buy um, lots of people didn't like these I do um, the trend was to go DSLRs shallow depth of field it's the last thing I want in here I, I want a camera that stays in focus over enough distance that you all can see everything nice and sharp so these things work uh, HD 1980 1080 uh, which is fine for what I want. I, I see no need at the moment to go higher to 4K. But these cameras are tried, tested, uh, loads of accessories. But the best thing is the lenses that you bolt on the front can be swapped. This particular one uh, is the normal type of lens. Uh, the lens that you're looking through me now on this one over here um, is actually uh, a wide angle because this, the studio is not huge. So a wide angle makes a bit more sense. Let me just see if I can uh, show you a bit more. On the top of the camera is a transmitter. So in actual fact, I'm doing the stupid thing. I'm going three meters to the receiver at the other end. So it takes the SDI from the camera, squirts it out at five gigs, turns up the other end, um, and it just saves me running a cable, which I could really easily do, but I haven't done. So. What have we do? Let's have a look. Um, let's if 
I want, I can go up really high, and I can pan it down. Um, so, there we go. So we can go from up there, and we can come swooping down. Um, rotates just as happily this way as that way. Sorry for all the reflections because I, the lights are set for what we normally do. So I can't really adjust those just for this. But the beauty of this is it can always be in the right place. And of course, because it's a radio camera, um, if I lock this off here, I can grab hold of the camera and I can just put it off. So now I've got the camera in my hand, move that out of the way. I can come around here and show you what's going on. This is another one of the cameras that lives in the studio all the time and it sits on uh, a Vinton ped, which is counterbalanced with air pressure inside. So you pump it up with the weight of the camera and so you can actually do exactly the same thing with this ped here as we did with the jib arm fingertip pressure will let you just lift it up and it'll stay where you put it. Having all these things within sort of close grasp is really useful. So this one, which has got a wide angle lens, um, sits over there normally and manages sort of to do the shot that goes this way. Uh, there's another camera over here, this one. Um, so that's exactly the same head, exactly the same camera, and that sits on another, another base over there. So I've got that one there. But when we cut to this one, um, it's um, just slightly wider, which is which is handy in a small space. Um, this thing, well, it's just a control panel for Black Magic Switcher. Um, you can actually, I mean, a lot of people, uh, a lot of people will use the software, and you can actually switch the cameras on here. Um, so we can we can do that. We can check I can I can change by using software or just put the button on there so um, I, I quite like having a manual control like this I just sort of grew up on them and I don't really see why to change um, I don't use that very often and it's got it's actually got um, chroma key keying inside it and I don't do that I do all the keying in um, Adobe Premiere. I, I quite like Premiere. And sitting on the desk over here is the other camera that's got the transmitter on the top. If I pull that round, you can have a look what's going on there. So, um, with these cameras, if you want to, you can stick a card in, um, but normally it goes straight out and into the switcher behind. Um, receivers on the top. Um, battery hanging off the back and I've got a dodgy back I've had it now for quite a few years and I bought these cameras originally because they were a bit lighter than the others of the same type and I found that with my dodgy back holding one of these on my shoulder was no bother at all um, now it is if I put one of these on my on my shoulder now even the weight of this is sufficient to give me a sort of backache after a while so that's what we're doing here uh, this particular camera is actually recording at the moment, uh, separately from what's going through the actual switcher here. So it's sort of a useful thing. Um, if I go back this way, so if I turn there, make sure I don't knock it off because I'm, as you know, I'm rather clumsy. These strange looking, these strange looking brackets on the front here are actually uh, for auto cues. I've got some auto cues for these cameras and uh, I've got two actually, I haven't got three, I've got two. Um, you mount them on the front of here and the ped is quite happy to take the weight of those as well and still be counterbalanced. Um, and the attachment goes on the front. The reason I'm not using them is mainly the faffing of typing all the stuff up because most of it of course I make up on the spare of the moment but the other thing of course is 
when you've got the auto cue on the camera it brings the front of the camera out to about here which in a smaller studio is just takes up too much space um, I just I took them off when they were in the way and then put them back on again uh, what else can I show you on here um, because this camera does go outside quite often um, it's got it's got a foam windshield covering the that one and then uh, the hairy cover as well which I've just managed to do it bear with me these little short shotguns I mean the reality is they're not even really a shotgun they're just a bit of a narrow cardioid um, but they do need sort of the hairy covers this is a, a Ryko on the top of here uh, Ryko are probably the best known for doing those so I can take that one outside um, people ask about these Hollyland uh, radio systems and they're actually pretty good uh, five gig uh, plenty of channels um, the snag, of course, is that, like all things radio, obstacles, including people in the way, cause you grief. Um, it's just how these things are. Um, in a straight line, I have no doubts at all that the 400 feet range that they quote is probably right. Um, it just depends on what's in between. If you've got bricks, and especially brick or concrete with rebar in it, then it doesn't go very far at all. And even a few walls can actually be a fairly good RF obstacle. But um, they've proven to be rather nice. I tend to use them if we do a show where perhaps we've got someone running around in the audience with microphones and things. If you give them one of these cameras as well, they can run around the audience with a microphone and a cameraman. Um, and you can get back from the seats in a theatre back to the stage with these things quite well. So that's no bother at all. If I cut to the signal from... If I can find it. That's the actual camera shot from where it's standing. Um, not quite sure how we do a mix with the chroma key. All right, we'll work that one out. So that's what the camera can see. And the only real snag with radio systems that does annoy me is the time delay. So if you can see all the monitors, let's go back to um, go back to this one. Let's let you see the monitors. So if you look at all the monitors there, you can actually see. So there we've got camera three, um, camera two on that one, which is the, the one behind me, and the output from the radio camera. If we look at my hand now doing a clap, you watch what happens. The radio camera which is in camera one position is always the last one um, and SDI is the least delay if you go through uh, HDMI connections the delay is even more so SDI is the, is the sort of lowest latency but it's still not very good um, so it realistically That's why latency causes me grief. Um, it is just a bit of a pain in the bum. Um, not much you can really do about it. It's just the way the system works. But it does mean that, you know, when I try look at a shot like this with all the cameras on the monitor, then, you know, which sync is the right one? It, I find um, mouths going out of sync extremely annoying. But there's nothing much you can do about it nowadays. Um, it happens in every particular field, doesn't it? Um, sync is always a bit of a pain in the bum. So there we go. 
that's some of the stuff that's sitting here in the studio and uh, it's probably bored the pants off you I'm afraid but uh, a few people asked if I could explain what things were so I hope some of this makes some sort of sense anyway see you on the next video look after yourselves take care